There's this amazing thing that happens when you take an inexpensive cut of meat, put it in a pressure cooker with a bunch of vegetables, a little broth, let it cook for a while, take it out, shred it, and then make this amazing restaurant style burrito. Oh boy, you're gonna dig today. You are gonna dig today. We're going like, like not taco shop, but Mexican restaurant. Like, a, like an El Torito or those kind of places. And before you go, oh, it's, good. Ah. it's not. We take the beef, we make it, it's, forget it. Just pay attention. Start here with a three pound chuck roast. I bought it on sale. It was about 12 bucks. I mean, it's, it's hefty, there's a lot. We're gonna cook it in the pressure cooker, but we wanna sear it first. So I'm just gonna cut this into three pieces. One, two, And three, we're gonna oil it just a little bit, no seasonings yet. And don't worry about, I mean, if there's a giant chunk of fat like this, this guy you could cut out, because you don't need all that. But the other pieces that are sort of scattered in and about, leave those, they're gonna be fine. Now let's take our pieces, throw them in the pressure cooker on saute. So pressure cookers have all kinds of settings. We want, not that, hold on, it's not, it's not going there. Is I, this the bad one? No, no, there we go. So you want to turn it to saute, that's going to heat the pot inside and let you brown something. So we don't overload, we'll do a couple pieces at a time. And I know you can't really hear too much yet, but you'll see the results. The point of sauteing it first is to get color, texture, that will translate to flavor in the end, and that's what it's all about. And when one side's done, Turn it over and do the others. And when the last of the meat is done, take it out, then we add everything else. And that consists of diced red peppers, diced green pepper, yellow onion, about a cup of beef broth, a couple tablespoons of minced chipotle peppers. Boy, is this gonna be good. Seasonings, garlic powder, cumin, chipotle chili powder for a beautiful kick, oregano, big pinch of kosher salt, Put the beef back. We add one more thing, chopped shishito peppers. I'll explain those in a second. We give everything a little mix. We put the lid back on. We set it for high pressure for one hour and we let it go. The last thing I added were these, shishito peppers. They're these crazy, wrinkly, Japanese style peppers. They're not that hot. They have lots of flavor though, and I love them in a stir fry or in a situation like this. The crazy thing is, while I say they're not that hot, one in every 15 or 20 is hot. And if you get it, you're like, what the hell just happened? They're really good stir fried in a little oil with you know uh, some kosher salt or Japanese spice or something. If you get a chance to buy them and try them, you'll really dig them. They'll be fantastic in here. So we let this sit, it comes to pressure, once it hits pressure, it cooks for an hour. When the hour is up, it naturally releases the pressure. That's when we can open it and turn it into the most fantastic restaurant style shredded beef burrito ever. Okay, 60 minutes has passed. The 15-ish minutes of natural pressure releasing has happened. And we can open it now and see what we're left with. And, Oh boy, look at that. And if you look inside, wow, shredded gorgeous beef. Look at how it squishes. That is what you're going for. I mean, please, I, I can just put my tongs in it. It separates. Tell you what, let's put it in a bowl and then we'll bust it up even more. Those, please. So in we go. Uh, honestly, I wish you could smell this. And look, that, that was a shishito pepper that's now all mushed. Another lift and in, this was a red pepper that's now mushed. And this is the goal. The goal is to make this amazing, shredded, hugely aromatic, beautifully soft beef that you can do a million things with. And just wait till you see what we do with it. Therein lies the beauty of a pressure cooker, ladies and gentlemen. We've taken a not so delicate piece of beef and made it amazing in about an hour. Look, this amazing. This. 
that it just it just pulls apart. It's nothing. If I had grandparents anymore, I could rip the teeth out of their heads. Oh, that's horrible. I was gonna, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was gonna say, a baby with no teeth would have no problem making their way through this. The spices that we put in here, the cumin, the garlic powder, the oregano, the chipotle chili powder. So it certainly deserves a, a preemptive bite before we, uh, before we make anything, no? Let's get a piece. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's madness. That's about to go from here to here. Pay attention to what we're going to do, because this is really fun. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take one of our much beloved, starting to dry out actually, tortillas from the taco shop that's right around the corner from my house. We'll call it Nico's, because that's actually its name. And we'll warm this just slightly. And by just slightly means just slightly. I want to make it pliable, okay? So, we take our tortilla. Ay, 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 ay. And when it's where you think you want it, which is about here, we put it down. And now here's what goes in. I'm going to start with a, a little layer of Monterey Jack cheese. Now some of the amazing shredded beef, like this. And okay, fine, a tiny bit more. I'm gonna give it a little green salsa. A tiny bit more cheese. And now we roll up. So we go like this, over the top. Sides in, done this before. And we roll. So here's what you've got, right? It's beautiful, it's burrito-like. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of oil, brush it on the Evo, we'll go seam side down. Now we wanna get a little crisp and a little color. Not a lot, just a little. We're gonna do this on both sides. And back here, I'm warming some red enchilada sauce. Just store-bought, trust me, this is all good. It's all good unless you're gonna dog me for not making my own enchilada sauce. Growing my own enchiladas in my backyard and crushing them and straining them. I've heard of those enchilada bushes. <laughs> They're very hard to take care of. What an asshole, he didn't grow his own enchiladas. So as you start to look, oops. Ah, as you start to look, you can see, ow. Sorry, I gotta fix this, stand by, stand by, stand by. We give it a couple minutes on that side and then we'll flip it. And after a couple minutes, we give the top a light little splish of oil. Turn it over. Oh. Look how nice. That's what you want. You want that little crispiness. And when it's ready, ay, ay, ay. Off it comes, goes on a plate. Look at that beautifulness. And this is what it's about. Swing. 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 Wait to see what we do next. We start by placing some of our amazing, not made, enchilada sauce around our tremendously delicious shredded beef and chipotle restaurant style burrito. Then we add a little sour cream right to the top, a tiny bit more of the salsa verde or green salsa, some cheese, or in this case, some queso, and we end with some cilantro or cilantro. Look it, it's like a model turning in place for you. You want to eat me. You want to eat me. And what are we waiting for? Let's just go right here. It's 
So that is filled with this gorgeous chipotle shredded beef. And when you get a bite, let's make sure that you get some sour cream, the beef, of course, and some of this enchilada sauce. And by the way, if you don't like red, you could use green. I just salivated a little. Mm. It's tender, it's juicy, it's moist, it's ridiculously flavorful. It's everything you want in what I call a restaurant style burrito. This is a knife and fork burrito. Of course it could be a hand one, but. <laughs> and the crisp that you get from this, and if you don't want to do it on this, or, or in a nonstick pan, do it in your oven. Still give it a little oil, 350, for probably 20 minutes, and it'll get kind of nice. And if you don't have a pressure cooker, wherever it is, I took it away to clean it. You could do it in the oven, in like a Dutch oven, all the same ingredients, probably 300, 325 for like five and a half hours or so. It's all good. Just do it. Just cook. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for being there. Thanks for hanging out with us. It means an awful lot. Thank you for leaving a message, comments, liking us, and thank you for subscribing. You've helped us get to over half a million. It was damn cool because of you guys. If you guys aren't there, we're not here, and we recognize that. See ya. <laughs>